Yellowstone National Park employees and guests, residents of the surrounding area. We have received trustworthy information about the real threat of an eruption in Yellowstone National Park. Please stay calm and alert. Yellowstone National Park has recently been shut down due to the drastic changes that have been observed in its delicate ecosystem. Fox News correspondent Peter Ducey has revealed that the reason behind this abrupt closure is to contain the threats posed by the rapidly increasing risk of eruption of the supervolcano located inside Yellowstone by 320 percent. What led to its closure? And should we be concerned about a potential supervolcano eruption? Let's find out. Yellowstone National Park, one of the most iconic and celebrated national parks in the United States, contains an abundance of Mother Nature's geologic marvels. Being one of the world's largest calderas, it boasts over 10,000 thermal features and a breathtaking collection of hundreds of geysers shooting water 100 feet into the sky. While the majority of the park is situated within the borders of Wyoming, it also extends into the two neighboring states of Montana and Idaho. The park hosts an impressive array of wildlife, with around 300 bird species, 16 types of fish, and 67 mammal species including grizzly bears, wolves, moose, and elk. Yellowstone Lake, a dazzling expanse of 132 square miles, reigns as the highest mountain lake in all of North America. The lake is a popular tourist attraction, as it is perfect for boating, fishing, and even soaking in the breathtaking views. However, this is only one of the tranquil lakes and rivers that grace this magnificent park. Yellowstone National Park also offers an extensive network of over 1,100 miles of hiking trails, making it a wilderness enthusiast's dream destination. Day hiking is a popular activity in the park, and fortunately, no permits are required for such excursions, ranging from the leisurely 2.5-mile Natural Bridge Trail to the more challenging 11-mile Sepulchre Mountain Trail. Apart from the hiking trails, the park also boasts 15 miles of boardwalks, spanning hundreds of miles and offering hikers the chance to explore breathtaking and diverse landscapes. The park provides over 300 designated backcountry campsites for overnight stays. Yellowstone's diverse landscape includes its own Grand Canyon, carved by the Yellowstone River, boasting a depth of over 1,000 feet a width of 1,500 to 4,000 feet, and a length of approximately 20 miles. Truly a feast for the eyes. Yet the wonders don't end there. Yellowstone's hydrothermal features are an absolute marvel, accounting for half of the world's known features. Throughout the seasons, Yellowstone's climate dances to its own charming tune. One can expect warm, sunny days during summer, with temperatures reaching a delightful 80 degrees Fahrenheit in July at lower elevations, only to cool to around 45 degree F at night. Winter, on the other hand, embraces the park with a chilly embrace, bringing temperatures that rarely rise above the mid-20 SF, and often dipping to a frosty 0 degree F or lower at night. One of its most famous geysers, Old Faithful, has been erupting regularly since 1870. Though its intervals have lengthened in recent years, adding an air of unpredictability to its faithful reputation. Yellowstone is also renowned for its bison herds, the only ones to have lived continuously in the U.S. since prehistoric times, often causing bison jams on the roads. How is the park supposed to be impacted after this impending explosion? And how was the park deemed safe when there has always been a volcano inside it? The park's history dates back 11,000 years, with the earliest human archaeological deposits found on the shore of Yellowstone Lake. Beneath its surface lies one of the world's largest active volcanoes, making Yellowstone a supervolcanic system, though its last major eruption occurred 2.1 million years ago. To understand the threat posed by the eruption, we must first take a look at the supervolcano system in detail. The location of Yellowstone National Park on top of one of the world's largest active volcanic systems has led to the formation of the incredible geothermal wonders in Yellowstone, which are some of the most diverse and impressive on Earth. But what is a supervolcano? Beneath Yellowstone National Park lies a supervolcano, an immensely powerful geological feature capable of ejecting more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of rock and ash in a single eruption which is 2,500 times more material than the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption that caused significant devastation. 
The last super eruption at Yellowstone occurred approximately 631,000 years ago, and scientists believe that such catastrophic events occur roughly every 100,000 years on Earth. The supervolcano is fueled by a massive reservoir of hot magma located about five miles beneath the park's surface. This magma reservoir is supplied by a deep-seated plume of molten rock originating from hundreds of miles below. Now, let's explore the geothermal features that Yellowstone National Park is most renowned for. Yellowstone National Park is home to an extraordinary collection of geothermal features, including hot springs, geysers, mud pots, fumaroles, and travertine terraces. These features provide a unique opportunity to witness the Earth's geothermal activity up close. Hot springs are the most common geothermal feature in Yellowstone. They are formed when rainwater seeps through the Earth's surface and becomes superheated by the magmatic system beneath the park. The open plumbing system allows the hot water to rise back to the surface, creating pools of hot water. Some hot springs can have boiling waters, which may lead to explosive eruptions, but most maintain a constant temperature due to convection currents. Yellowstone's hot springs are known for their vibrant colors, caused by thermophiles microorganisms that thrive in hot temperatures and create stunning mats of color. The intense heat and the presence of different minerals in the water also contribute to the stunning array of colors, ranging from deep blues and greens to vivid oranges and reds. Geysers are rare and fascinating natural fountains, since there are just around 1,000 active geysers in the world. They share similarities with hot springs, but they have constrictions in their plumbing systems, which prevent water from circulating freely to the surface. As a result, the deepest circulating water in the geyser system can exceed the surface boiling point. The increased pressure near the surface causes the eruption, with tremendous amounts of steam forcing water out of the vent. Old Faithful is the most famous geyser in the world and erupts approximately every 90 minutes, reaching heights of around 130 feet. Yellowstone is home to more than 500 geysers, making it the largest concentration of geysers on Earth. Mud pots are another fascinating geothermal feature in Yellowstone. They form when thermal water heats the collected surface water in a shallow, impermeable depression. The steam and gases that emerge from the feature's vent cause the water to boil, creating a bubbling and gurgling muddy landscape. Mud pots are often associated with the characteristic smell of hydrogen sulfide gas, resembling the scent of rotten eggs. Microorganisms in mud pots help convert the gas to sulfuric acid, breaking down rock into clay and giving the mud pots their distinctive colors. Keep watching to get a glimpse into the fascinating geothermal features and how their activity could increase the chances of the volcanic eruption. Fumaroles, also known as steam vents, occur when a hydrothermal feature has very little water, causing the water to boil away before reaching the surface. As a result, steam and volcanic gases are emitted from the vent, sometimes with hissing or whistling sounds. Fumaroles are openings in the Earth's crust through which volcanic gases escape, such as carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide, creating a surreal and otherworldly atmosphere. They are often superheated, with temperatures as high as 280 degree F. Black Growler in Norris Geyser Basin is one of Yellowstone's famous steam vents. Travertine terraces are formed from limestone that is dissolved by thermal water. As the water rises through the limestone, it carries high amounts of dissolved limestone, i.e. calcium carbonate. When the water reaches the surface, carbon dioxide is released, and the calcium carbonate is deposited, forming the chalky white mineral known as travertine. These formations resemble an inside-out cave and create a stunning visual spectacle with colorful stripes formed by thermophiles. The Mammoth Hot Springs area in Yellowstone is famous for its travertine terraces, are volcanic eruptions in Yellowstone common? Is it really that big of a deal? Throughout history, the majority of eruptions in Yellowstone have been smaller lava flows, with the most recent occurring around 70,000 years ago at Pitchstone Plateau. While smaller eruptions are more common, what draws significant attention to Yellowstone is the remote possibility of super eruptions. So what is a super eruption? A super eruption is classified as having a magnitude of 8 or higher on the Volcano Explosivity Index, which involves the ejection of at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. To put this into perspective, such an eruption is enough to bury an area as large as Texas under 5 feet of volcanic debris. So yes, 
A supervolcanic eruption is definitely something that would shake up the ecosystem of not just Yellowstone, but most of the North American continent. Scientists and researchers have been fascinated by the activities going on at Yellowstone, as the potential consequences of such an event are staggering, making Yellowstone a subject of much scientific study and public fascination. Researchers closely monitor the geothermal activity in the park to better understand the underlying volcanic processes and to assess any potential risks. What will be the impact of this eruption on the park? Apart from lush forests and greenery, Yellowstone National Park is a haven for wildlife, boasting over 200 species of animals that call this pristine wilderness their home. Among the most iconic inhabitants are the bison, North America's largest free-ranging population of which can be found in the park. Once on the brink of extinction with only 24 individuals remaining, their numbers have rebounded to nearly 4,700. Gray wolves have also made a remarkable comeback in Yellowstone. After being eliminated from the area by the 1970s, 31 gray wolves were reintroduced between 1995 and 1996. Their population has thrived, now numbering over 400 across the greater Yellowstone region. These predators play a vital role in the park's ecosystem, and Yellowstone is home to both grizzly bears and black bears. The deer family is well represented in Yellowstone, with elk, moose, and mule deer grazing on grass, leaves, and bark. Pronghorn antelope, capable of sprinting up to 60 miles per hour, can be seen grazing on the prairies. Mountain lions, also known as cougars or panthers, are elusive and typically reside at higher elevations. In addition to the larger mammals, Yellowstone is teeming with smaller but equally fascinating creatures. Chipmunks, ground squirrels, martens, beavers, river otters, and yellow-bellied marmots are among the diverse range of small mammals that call the park their home. The park is a haven for various bird species, including the iconic bald eagle, America's national symbol. Ospreys, with their distinctive dark stripe across their eyes, are often spotted near bodies of water, adept at catching fish. Peregrine falcons, known for their incredible speed during dives, nest on cliffs near valleys and rivers. With such diverse and abundant wildlife, Yellowstone National Park provides a unique and unforgettable opportunity to observe animals in their natural habitats and appreciate the wonders of the natural world. Is this closure a rare occurrence? How frequently is the park shut down for visitors? National parks, including Yellowstone, are rarely closed entirely unless there are extraordinary circumstances or emergencies that pose significant risks to visitors' safety or park resources. However, there have been instances of partial closures or restrictions within the park due to various factors, such as wildfires, safety concerns, construction and maintenance, wildlife management, resource protection, and health emergencies. In 2022, Yellowstone National Park experienced the first closure in 34 years when it closed on June 13 due to unprecedented heavy flooding, rock slides, and extremely hazardous conditions caused by intense rainfall of up to 5 inches, combined with snowmelt of 2 to 5 inches. Subsequently, on June 22, the southern portion of the park partially reopened, allowing visitors to enter with certain restrictions in place, and specific safety measures were enforced to ensure visitor well-being. Prior to these flooding-related closures, Yellowstone had previously been closed to visitors since March 24, 2020, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay tuned to find out what the implications of this particular closure could be. It's really a shame that the park has to be closed down for threatening reasons, but Peter Ducey has explained that there's no way to avoid it. From the end of the park authorities, measures are being put in place to contain the threats in Yellowstone, the most significant one of which is the supervolcano lurking beneath the surface. Recent Eruptions Yellowstone's volcanic history is marked by three massive super eruptions, each separated by hundreds of thousands of years. The first major eruption occurred approximately 2.1 million years ago and is considered one of the largest volcanic eruptions known to date. It covered an area of over 5,790 square miles with ash, leaving a significant impact on the landscape. The most recent super eruption took place around 640,000 years ago and resulted in the collapse of the ground into the magma reservoir, creating a giant caldera. This caldera, known as the Yellowstone Caldera, 
measures approximately 30 miles by 45 miles. The caldera's outline can still be observed on modern park maps as a white area. Yellowstone's super volcano has produced two of these super eruptions, where more than 250 cubic miles of debris were ejected. Such events are rare and are associated with volcanic systems that have the potential to cause significant global impacts. Monitoring changes. Monitoring activity in Yellowstone is of paramount importance due to its potential for catastrophic super eruptions. The Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, YVO, plays a crucial role in monitoring the volcanic system to better understand its behavior and prepare for any future catastrophic events. Ongoing research and monitoring efforts help ensure public safety and deepen the understanding of this remarkable geological feature. Yellowstone experiences a considerable number of earthquakes each year, ranging from 1,000 to 3,000. Although most are virtually unnoticeable with magnitudes of three or less, they provide scientists with valuable insight into the filling rate of the magma chamber beneath the park. An increase in earthquake activity could indicate fresh magma being fed into the reservoir. In 2022, 2,429 earthquakes were located in the Yellowstone region, with the largest recorded earthquake measuring magnitude 4.2. About 66% of the earthquakes occurred as swarms, which are clusters of earthquakes grouped together in both space and time. The most significant swarm, consisting of over 1,100 earthquakes, occurred near Grizzly Lake between Mammoth Hot Springs and Norris Geyser Basin. The Yellowstone caldera has experienced subsidence of 1-2 inches annually since 2015, with minor fluctuations related to seasonal groundwater recharge. Recent research by Montana State University geologists has revealed new complexities in the large volcanic eruption that formed the Yellowstone caldera 631,000 years ago. Steamboat Geyser, located in Yellowstone National Park, has a fascinating history of eruptive activity. On March 15, 2018, it erupted for the first time in more than three years, marking the beginning of a new period of heightened activity. Since then, the geyser has experienced more than 100 major eruptions, with plume heights of hot water reaching over 377 feet, making it the tallest eruption height recorded for any active geyser worldwide. As a result, Steamboat Geyser has gained the reputation of being the tallest active geyser on Earth. Scientists have been closely monitoring Steamboat Geyser's recent hyperactivity and are eager to understand the triggers behind this intensified phase. Historical records on Steamboat's major eruptions reveal three periods of heightened activity, including one in the 1960s lasting nearly eight years, another in the 1980s lasting nearly three years, and the current ongoing period that began in 2018. However, the duration of the current heightened activity remains uncertain. In 2022, Steamboat Geyser continued its trend of frequent activity, erupting 11 times throughout the year. However, the number of annual eruptions has been declining since reaching peaks in 2019 and 2020, hinting at a potential shift in the geyser's behavior. As of the end of July 2023, Steamboat Geyser had not exhibited any activity, with only five eruptions recorded for the year. Additionally, the thermal features near Doublet Pool on Geyser Hill, situated close to the iconic Old Faithful, were highly active in late May and early June. Could this increased activity in the steamboat geyser be an indication for the future? But what would happen if the supervolcano actually erupted? If the supervolcano underneath Yellowstone National Park were to experience another massive eruption, it could have catastrophic consequences. The most likely eruption scenario would involve multiple warnings like smaller lava flows and a typical volcanic eruption, possibly preceded by a swarm of earthquakes as magma makes its way to the surface. Intense seismic activity would likely be observed across the entire park, and it could take weeks or months for the earthquakes to break up the rocks above the magma before an eruption occurs. In the event of a super-eruption, which is an eruption 1,000 times more powerful than a regular volcanic eruption, the main damage would come from volcanic ash ejected miles into the air and scattered across the country. The ash would be a combination of splintered rock and glass, Advanced modeling and historical ash deposits suggest that the eruption would create an umbrella cloud expanding in all directions, with the northern Rockies potentially being buried in three feet of ash. 
causing devastating effects on large areas of Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah. The Midwest would experience a few inches of ash, while the coasts would see smaller amounts. Volcanic ash, even in small amounts, is capable of causing severe damage, including fatalities to people, plants and animals, and destruction of buildings and infrastructure. A few inches of ash can destroy farms, clog roadways, cause respiratory problems, and disrupt essential services such as sewage systems and power distribution. Air travel would likely have to be halted across much of North America due to the presence of ash in the atmosphere. Furthermore, a super-eruption of this magnitude would have significant effects on the global climate. Volcanoes can emit sulfur aerosols that reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere, leading to temporary cooling of the climate. While these particles are short-lived, their impact can be dramatic. Historical examples such as the Tambora eruption in 1815 and the Pinatubo eruption in 1991 caused temporary global cooling and had severe consequences on crops and food production. At the same time, it is important to remember that volcanoes do not work in predictable ways and their eruptions do not follow predictable schedules. That is why it is so important to stay informed about the developments and consider the ruthless side of nature while indulging in its beauty. Despite the best laid plans of humanity, nature shall always prevail. Thanks for watching. Make sure to watch this video. You won't believe it.